thank you everybody. I'm so excited to be here. This is a great night to be out, isn't it? Summer, it's like the best time of the year. Kids are out of school, people are planning family vacations. Has anybody gone on a trip yet this year? A few? Okay, that's good. Now it doesn't count if you went by airplane. I'm talking road trips. When I was a kid, only the rich people went on airplanes. We did road trips, but we managed to travel in style. We had a 70s vintage gold station wagon. I know, right? It was awesome. And you didn't have to wear seat belts in it either because it wasn't a law back then. <laughs> Apparently, we didn't know much in the 70s. But we'd all pile into that thing, mom, dad, little sister, and me, and we'd hit the road. And as soon as the car got started, dad would fire up his pipe. Ugh. Apparently, we didn't know about secondhand smoke back then either, as it was bad. I would be going, <coughs> Dad, you think maybe we could maybe roll down some windows or something? Well, the air conditioner was going, so that wasn't happening, but he did humor me and crack his window just a little bit, which was just enough to cause the dreaded road warble. You know what I'm talking about? When one window's down, the others are not, and it goes something like, and you kind of feel like your head's going to explode. It's good fun, great fun. So my best technique for dealing with the smoke was to crawl down on the floorboard and hide my head under a blanket. Now this was super comfy because there's a big hump in the middle of the floorboard, so you had an option. You could either curl up in a ball and use the big bump for a blank or a pillow, or you could just stretch across the whole thing until the bump was on your stomach. Either way, good times, good times. So. Um, we would just get, I would just get settled under that blanket, and then I would hear from the front seat, my mom call out, oh, look at all the trees, Deanne. Okay, now here, let me clarify something. If someone were to just say, hey, look at all the trees, that is directed to no one in particular, which means everyone is allowed to ignore it. Okay, but mom was too smart for that. Oh no, she put a name on it. It was always Deanne, look at the trees. So I would come out of the blanket, pop my head up and go, uh-huh, yeah mom, that's a lot of trees. I was very excited about it. And we get back down under the blanket about five minutes later. <gasps> Deanne, look at all those cows. Okay, now I had definitely seen cows before. They're in all the children's picture books, okay? so. This kind of went on, and I didn't really understand why I had to see every tree, cow, oil rig that was, you know, on the whole, des you know, during the whole trip. Plus, the whole destination back, the same ones were still there, so we had to see it twice and hear about it. It was so much fun. Now, Mom kept very busy doing that, and her other job was the meal planner. So this was before the days of cell phones and Siri, so it was a hard job. You had to look at billboards. Now. Fortunately, her billboard comments were directed at my dad, so we were safe from that. But in the back seat, we could still hear a constant stream of, oh look, in 200 miles, there's gonna be a Mexican restaurant. How about that, Dick? And he would be saying, I don't care. Okay, so in a little bit later, we'd hear, hey, I think in the same town as that Mexican restaurant, there's gonna be a burger place. What do you think of that? I don't care. Okay, so this would go on until the point where we're actually starving to death because no one had made a decision. And she says finally, oh look, there's a family style restaurant just ahead. What do you think of that? To which he would say, well, whatever you want. Okay, well dad had not been that excited about any of the options. <laughs> so we definitely pulled into that one. So we'd get there, look at the menus, and dad would go, I can't eat any of this. And mom would say, what's wrong? This is a great place. There's something for everyone. And he'd go, well, I wouldn't have picked it. <laughs> you know, poor mom. She couldn't have went. She just couldn't win. She really tried. I felt bad for her. So as a result, when I grew up and had my own family, I learned from her mistakes. I started packing sandwiches in coolers. They loved that. Yeah, maybe not so much. But I was very practical. OK, let's be real. I was a cheap skate. Yeah, but I love to save money and I also love to save time. So I had a rule. If we stopped for gas, everybody had to get out and at least try to use the bathroom. We were not making multiple stops. That was the rule. It didn't really work out well though. Because what happened was 
we'd just get past a road stop, of course, just past it, and someone would go, I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, so we would stop, but their dad did not have the same philosophy as me about stopping and food and all that stuff. His philosophy was, I'm all about the snacks. He'd say, as long as we're here, we might as well get a snack for the road. So each person would pick out a snack, and I'm not sure what bothered me most, the 20 bucks it cost us or the 20 minutes that we could have been traveling. <laughs> so after that stop, we'd go on down just a little ways, and someone else would say, I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, I began to worry for a while that my kids had a medical issue. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So we would, we would, oh, I, so I said, all right, I finally got Weiss to this situation. I said, okay, we'll stop, but nobody gets snacks. Do you know what happened then? They said, oh, you know what? Actually, I don't have to go anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah, score one for mom on that one. I do still love road trips, though. I don't get bored when I'm driving. I can listen to radio and podcasts and audiobooks all day long. It's great. In fact, one time, I even thought about being a trucker. Wouldn't that have been perfect? Like, I could get paid for listening to audiobooks. That would be a dream. Except for one problem. Apparently, there's a rule that you have to be able to back the truck up. <laughs> now, personally, I don't think I'd have a problem with that, but I know some of them are here, but some of my family is kind of judgy. <laughs> they think... They think that I am not a good backer. I mean, I don't know where it comes from. There was just one incident years ago where I backed into my father-in-law's car. But that wasn't my fault, because he was in my driveway. <laughs> my and, oh yeah, and my sister's car, that was fun. Um, I think that's it. Oh, no, wait, there was that dumpster. I backed into the dumpster, and that actually shattered the back windshield. My daughter was in the back seat at the time, and I'm pretty sure she still has PTSD from that incident. So, you know, maybe that's not the thing for me. But, all right, the next time I got a car, though, guess what it had to have? The number one feature, what did it have to have? A backup camera. Oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. Since I've got the backup camera, I've only backed into one thing. Isn't that great? Okay, I saw that look on some of your faces. You're judging me. It doesn't count because it was a flatbed truck. Now, who's expected to see those flatbeds sticking out there? That's ridiculous. All right, but I tell you what, even though you're judging me, since you've been such a great audience, I'll do you a favor. If you're nervous at all about the fact that I'm currently parked out in the parking lot with all of your cars, <laughs> when the show ends tonight, I'm gonna give you guys a five minute head start. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone.